So, how do you know how long to hold winners for? Oh, well, if only we did know. Oh, yes, it's like we a our magic, crystal ball, don't we? Yeah, it's like a magic pill that only a few traders have, and they know exactly when to get out and uh, at what point. But yeah, it's a common question. People know, they know the theory of trading. They know that they're supposed to hold on to their winners for a given amount. Uh, but that was a question that came through from someone saying, well, I don't know how long to hold on. So there are various different ways that you can attribute. You could just go entirely mechanical and just say, well, if you've got a back-tested strategy and you know that it, you, know, you hold on to your winners for 2R or whatever it is, or whatever the levels are, and then that's when you come out. That's never going to get you out on every high or whatever, but you know, it's, a, it's a, maybe an, a, a profitable approach. But if it's an analysis, how do you know? Do you want to... Go yeah, I think I think it's really interesting because often a trader, I always say, have you have you got a predetermined target on your trade? Because you have to have a fairly strong conviction about where you're going to get out before you actually get in. Because you run the risk of if you're in and the trade is going well. We were talking about this earlier. Oh, yeah. If the trade's going the way you want, it's very easy to suddenly become a, a become gun ho and think, oh, okay, I'm going to extend my target. And the challenge is if you have a fixed target and you and price reaches it and shoots 5R past it, you're gonna feel like your target was wrong. But if you've got a 5R target and it only makes it to four and then rolls over, you're gonna feel like your target is wrong. So I think a good mindset is, you, if you're trying to catch the highs and catch the lows, or you're trying to be right on every single trade, in terms of getting the most out of that trade, it's, nev it's never gonna work. You've gotta to, got to have some guide, whether like you said, it's a back testing element, or even if you're using analysis, you're using a higher time frame moving average or a, a predetermined level, there needs to be some work that you've done to assess that. It might not be as rigid as back testing a mechanical strategy, but you've gotta know that there is some validity in running that trade for whatever target you've got. Because if you've got no frame of reference, and price doesn't make it to your predetermined target, you're gonna question whether it was right. So I think mm. you've, got to, you've got to have some idea of whether or not running a trade for five to one fits in with, with some element of analysis and data. Yeah, um, I mean, the way that I often look, I'm looking for overlaps a lot of the time. So, mm. and I'm looking for things, what I call air pockets on a chart. So yeah. if I've got in here, but there's a load of resistance just above, then, well, I wouldn't have taken you know, that trade. So I'm to take the trade in the first place, there has to be a pocket of air where I can see where until we get to the next level of resistance, which is going to be a, a level where there's going to be a lot of orders up there. So that will quite often attract price to the next price level anyway. So when I'm trying to determine a target, an ultimate target, if it is a trade, like this person said about, you know, trying to hold on to winners, then I'm looking for lots of overlaps. You've got intermediate resistance and then you've got you know, much higher, more important resistance as well. And so I'm looking at uh, where's the air pocket and where, you know, a, a, an overlap of resistance across, usually across some of those higher time frames in order to say, right, okay, I think from my analysis, this is where all this, these overlays are coming in. But I think coming back to this whole point of holding on to trades is it's all very well for that trader to say well I want to be able to hold on to trades for longer but you've got to be very careful are you emotionally ready for it because yes. if you we were talking about this earlier on if you get into a profitable trade and then it just rolls over well are you emotionally going to say oh my god I should I should have banked should and, have, yeah. yeah and and then that can affect you going forwards. So you've got to be ready for it. Not everything in trading are we ready for if we're only a year mm. into our trading, two years into our trading or whatever. So you have to, the longer you want to hold on to a trade for, the lower the win rate. The more yeah. likely it is that that trade is only going to go so far and will then roll over. So yeah. are you ready for that? You have to ask yourself these questions because a lot of people actually want the gains, but when the gains don't come and they give back a, a yeah. substantial profit, they're not, ha they're not happy with that. Yeah. Anything you want to... I think, yeah, I think the, the idea that, that if it's okay to be running two to one, two and a half to one, three to one trades for your first year, second year, third year, there's yeah. nothing wrong in that. And yeah. I, be aware that there will be a trade where 
you think the market is going to go higher. You've got, you've seen the analysis, but your strategy says I'm going to get out at two to one because that's my rules. And the market does run on past your two to one target. And it's that trade that can often be the stimulus to think, right, I should be running my trades longer because you're, you're forgetting about all of the two to ones that didn't run on yeah. for miles and have worked perfectly for you. And it's the strategy is working fine. And you're now transfixed on this one trade that you missed out. And then you start shifting your targets around based on one trade. And then you're not following your system or you're not following the, the, overall, the overall strategy. So mm. be wary of the odd trade influencing what you then do on the next trade. No, absolutely. Great point there. And I do think, uh, I, I think the, the secret sauce for me is in uh, holding trades for longer. Um, mm. But it doesn't mean to say that that's ready, like you've just said, for everybody. Because for most people, they're, they're much more sensitive to the results on a trade by trade basis. Yeah. They're not quite ready for, like you've just yeah. said, a, a, a five to one uh, reward risk. They're not ready for it. So you have to understand what you are ready for. Like you said, two to one risk rewards. You could merrily do, carry on trading like that for, the, yeah. for eternity being very profitable. So you have to ask what it is you're, you're, you're after. But of course, everyone thinks, oh, I've seen, like you've just said, I've seen this trade just carry on running and I want, I want some of that. Yeah. Just remember, the, there is a consequence of that as well. Yeah. You've got to be ready for the consequence. Don't get me wrong, I, I think that, and we're going to talk about this on something else on another slot, but I think that's the secret sauce because most people can't do it. Do it, yes. Uh, but, um, but there is a consequence. Yeah, there's always a price to pay.